Today on Pro Church Daily, we're talking about three more reasons to never use a slider on your church's website. Well, hey there, and welcome to Pro Church Daily, the show where in 10 minutes or less, you'll get your daily dose of tips and tactics to help your church share the message of Jesus while we navigate the biggest communication shift we've seen in the last 500 years. I'm your host, Alex Mills, joined as always by the boss man, it's Brady Shearer. And today, we're talking about three more reasons that you should delete your slider immediately. On episode 42 of Pro Church Daily, we talked about the singular most important reason why your church's website should not use a slider at the top of your homepage. And just to do a quick recap, a slider is also known as a carousel yeah. or a slideshow, that, that box at the top of a website that automatically auto-rotates through a number of different slides. And churches love sliders. We looked at the 30 most popular church website themes on themeforest.net, the most, if not, uh, one of the most, if not the most popular website marketplace in the world, and 25 out of the 31st wow. most popular website themes for churches had sliders at the top of their homepage. And in our case study of more than a thousand different church websites, 76.1% of those websites did not include a primary focal point. Not all of them had sliders, but if your church website did have a slider, you would fall into that camp of websites that do not have a primary focal point. Now, the single biggest reason why we think your church should not use a slider as the primary above-the-fold segment on your website is simply because the performance of sliders, proven empirically through multiple studies, is abysmal. They average less than 1% click-through rate, and the average click-through rate across all industries is about 3.5%. And so the primary call to action on your church's website, if you're using a slider, has a click-through rate of four times less, performing four times worse than the average click-through rate across all industries. Now, if that's not enough, if that reasoning isn't enough it to get rid of your church website slider, <laughs> I wanted to take it one step further in this episode. First reason, first additional reason why your church should not use a slider at the top of your homepage is that your website will become slower yeah. if you use a slider. Uh, sliders generally include a number of high resolution images, mm-hmm. auto rotating, and they also often have bloated JavaScript in there, and some still even have flash code, which is now just archaic when it comes to web code. And that can significantly decrease your website's load time. You know, one of the biggest factors for page rank in search engines is your site speed. Google, Bing, and other search engines want to send their users, their searchers, to websites that perform well. And if you're sitting waiting for a web page to load, that's a poor experience. And you're more likely to leave that page never to return. And when that happens, it signals to a search engine that, hey, this website was a bad user experience. Maybe you should rank it lower. And sliders just make your website that much slower because of the JavaScript, because of all the high resolution images. But not only load time, speaking specifically to SEO, sliders hurt SEO in a number of different ways. Uh, To quote Search Engine Land, a platform that is much more sophisticated in search engine optimization than I am, They said this, in most cases, the headings in sliders are wrapped in H1 tags. A basic SEO best practices state that there should only be one H1 tag per page. So the H1 tag is like the title tag. It's like the biggest heading indicating what the page is about. You really should only have one on each of your pages. And to continue search engine lands quote, it should appear before any other heading tag. The problem with using H1 or any heading tag in the slider is that every time the slide changes, the H1 tag Hmm. changes also. A page with five slides in the carousel will have five H1 tags, which greatly devalues the keyword relevance. Wow. Just another impact on the SEO in a negative perspective that your slider will have. Second reason, additional reason why your church website should not employ sliders. At the top of the page, in 2013, Nielsen ran a really cool study where they were looking at website sliders, and they had this user, and they asked the users to answer the following question. Does the brand Siemens have any special deals on washing machines? So that was the task that Nielsen gave to their users. And without much trouble, the users were able to navigate to the Siemens homepage, you know, Siemens.com or whatever it might be. Here's where things get interesting. At the top of the Siemens website, in 98-point font, which is massive font. Yeah, it's pretty large. (laughs) By far the largest section on the website was a promotion for washing machines with a discount code. Like, this is our big sale, top of the homepage. Despite this massive promotion at the top of the Siemens homepage, the user failed to find it because the panel 
auto-rotated instead of staying still. Huh. To quote Nielsen and their findings from this study, they said, after an extended visit to the website, including much time scrutinizing the homepage, the user gave up and assumed that Siemens didn't have any special deals. How could this be possible? How could they miss the most giant thing at the top of the website? Well, the first is that it auto-rotates. Yeah, it literally left the page. So someone lands on the page, if they don't look that section of the website in the first one, two, three, four, five seconds, yeah. it auto rotates to another promotion and thus disappears for that user. Interestingly, the user claimed that this wasn't the reason why they missed it. What they said and what Nielsen concluded was a term they coined called banner blindness. And there have been other studies that have proven this, that basically anything that looks like an ad to us online on the web, we have now conditioned ourselves to automatically disregard wow. banner blindness. You know, if you go to a website, let's say you land on a news website like a CNN or a Fox News or you know uh, even a sports website like yeah. a like an ESPN they have these banners all over Everywhere. right that's how they make their money lots of page clicks banners so you know maybe Lexus pays for an ad for their car we see those so often that now we've tuned ourselves to mm -hmm. automatically just be blind to them and website yeah. sliders look very similar of course and so it's very often that we tune ourselves out to those as well, wow. which is what happened in this case. Third and final reason, experts agree. Hey, sliders suck. So don't just take <laughs> it from me. I've compiled a number of different quotes from experts that know a lot more about web design okay. and conversion than I. So this is from <laughs> Carl Gillis, owner of AG Consults, really a conversion legend. He says, Sliders only exist because web designers love them and because they make the life of the web team easy. Right. They can give every department or product division a place on the homepage. Like we talked on episode yeah. 43, it makes the internal operations of your church happy, but doesn't help the visitor. Yeah. Carl goes on to say, it's not your job to make your colleagues happy. It's your job to make your visitors happy. That's right. That's the biggest problem with sliders. They don't convert, never did, never will. This is from Brian Eisenberg, the author of Be Like Amazon. He says, sliders suck 99.8% of the time. We once did a test with a client where we changed their slider to a static image with three core benefits and lifted conversions by a nice amount. Tim Ash, CEO at Site Turner, says sliders are absolutely evil and should be removed immediately. Finally, Lee Duddle, customer enablement at UserZoom, says carousels are effective at being able to tell people in leadership and other departments that their latest idea is now on the homepage, right. but they're next to useless for users and often get skipped because they look like advertisements. Yeah. There is an alternative. We have detailed it at the Nucleus blog blog.nucleus.church, find the sliders article. We don't want to just crucify sliders here. Right. Wait, we do want to just crucify <laughs> sliders, but we also want to provide an alternative. There's a better way. Find it at blog.nucleus.church. Yeah, and look, we're, we're, this is our second episode on sliders. Maybe tomorrow we'll chat about it again, but we're not just here to, to just tear down sliders and talk about how much we hate them and how much they suck. There's a better way, yeah. and the reason we're so adamant about finding that better way is because what we're trying to accomplish with our church homepage and our church website all together is for First impressions on people who don't know Jesus, yeah. right? There's so, so much important. At, there's so much so at stake, much at stake. and there, there, there's a better way. So let's just do it. And we want to help improve your church's website across the board. And so we've also put together a free download called the Ultimate Church Website Page Template Library. And yeah. inside there, you'll find seven different page templates, pre-written, pre-structured copy that you can copy and paste directly to your church's website. One of the page templates in there is the seven-part kids ministry template Sweet. that walks through the seven necessary sections you need on your kids ministry page. Super helpful for new visitors. Again, yeah. helping them make sure when they're asking that question, what does this church have for my kids? Right. You answer it effectively. And when they're like, man, is it safe for me to leave my kids with these strangers and being able to put them at ease using this pre-written framework, right. pre-written copy, prochurchtools.com slash nucleus is the URL to get those free downloadable templates. Thanks for watching today's episode of Pro Church Daily. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey, thanks for watching today's episode of Pro Church Daily. Make sure to turn on notifications so you never miss a new video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you like this video, it'd mean the world to us if you give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.